Hello folks, this is Dan Watson from thelubepage.com with this edition of the Lube Page. We do these videos specifically as information for you and they are brought to you by Dan Watson, that's me, the Lube Page, that's my, that's my web page. So we're going to bring these to you on a periodic basis and today we're going to be talking about base stocks. Now, as you know, uh, I bring some credibility to this because I am a certified lubrication specialist from the Society of Turbologists and Lubrication Engineers. I only bring that up to you so that you know that I'm going to tell you straight facts. They're not going to be uh, warped or colored for some particular thing. They're just pure factual information in these videos. Now, I am a longtime AMS old jobber and always would appreciate your business if it, you get to the point where you are looking to buy something and also that you can contact me anytime uh, by my 800 number, which you're going to see on the screen on a number of times. That's 800-370-2986. Or you can go to thelubepage.com. Also, one quick reminder here. If you happen to go to the Amsoil corporate website and you're looking to buy product, I've told you about it, you think it's a pretty good idea and you go there, I would ask that they'll always have a place which is for a referral. And if you would put my name in that referral block, Dan Watson, then hey, that would help me out. So okay, let's get down to today's subject, base stock. Well, sometimes called base oil. Now, it, intuitively, everybody kind of knows what that means, but we're going to try to break it down a little bit so that it's easier to know what we're talking about. One way to look at this is the analogy of making soup, vegetable soup, beef soup, whatever it happens to be. The base for soup is water. So the base stock for soup is water. So what does that mean? It means that that liquid that you're going to use to put your vegetables and other things in, that's the stock, that's the base product that you have to mix things in. So when it comes to oil, lubricating oil in particular, it's really the same thing. Base stock is not mysterious. It's are we going to use a uh, conventional oil, petroleum as it's called, which is a product that comes out of the ground and is refined, or are we going to use some kind of man-made liquid, which would be a synthetic product. And those are going to be base stocks because they form the base oil that we will later put additives in to tailor that lubricating oil for a particular application, whether it happens to be engine oil, it could be uh, hydraulic oil, it could be compressor oil. So we will tailor the additives that go into that base stock in order to have a finished product which goes to that particular application. Okay, so base stock, easy to understand. It's the liquid we put the stuff into. No, no, no more complex than that. Now, petroleum, I'll talk about just a few minutes about petroleum because it's kind of important to understand. Petroleum in the ground is a mess. And it just is, it's a natural product, which without getting into real, real deep details, it's going to be a product of wherever it is formed in the ground. So in some places it's going to have different kinds of contaminants and other places it's going to have different ones. Uh, but when it comes out of the ground, believe it or not, it's so crude, that's why we call it crude oil, it still has sometimes a little tiny uh, particles of rocks and sand and other kinds of things in it. So the very first thing we have to do with, with petroleum or crude oil is get the big big stuff out. You know, we have to clean it, if you will. So we start the process by getting all the big stuff out. You can do that by separation techniques and you finally get where it's pretty much just liquid without any solid uh, forms of uh, minerals or rocks or things in it. And then it's ready to go to what is called the refining or cracking tower in an oil refinery. Okay, I don't want to make oil refiners out of you. What I do want you to understand is in those refineries, they attempt to both clean up and separate the uh, 
petroleum into different grades of viscosity. Remember we talked about that in the last video? So we're going to do different viscosities in this cracking tower and that's how we're going to separate out the oil. They're going to take off gasoline, they're going to take off diesel, kerosene, naphtha, uh, and then they'll have a residual product left and that's going to be the lubricating oil. Okay, so that's petroleum. Now it is a natural product, it's a good product, but its molecular structure is just what nature has provided. It is hydrocarbons with certain relationships to each other in compounds, okay? All right, so now if we go over to a couple of processes that are used that you need to know the name of because it'll be important in our discussions in the future. One is called hydrotreating. This is a process of using hydrogen to make compounds easy to remove from the oil. What am I talking about? Well, there's sulfur and there's phosphorus and there's different things in that oil that you, you need to get most of it out if you can. So this process of hydro treating was developed back in the fifties and it helps to clean the oil up. It's a good process. You can get pretty clean base stocks if you will push them through the hydro treating process enough to really clean them up. So uh, it's been around a while and it's, and it really works. Okay. There's another process called hydro cracking. Now I'm not going to delve into the chemistry of that too deep, but just to tell you that it breaks the molecules. It breaks the hydrocarbon molecules up into smaller molecules under high temperature and high pressure. That's called hydro cracking, not treating. And I want you to make sure you keep those separate in your mind. Treating is a cleaning process. Cracking is making a new molecular structure of smaller uh, molecules than you started out with. Remember natural hydrocarbons coming out of the ground. If you thought of it as fruit salad, you'd have everything from raisins all the way up to plums and they'd all be hydrocarbon molecules. Well, you don't lubricate very well with that kind of a mixture. So you try to get a much more uniform cut if you can. It's impossible with the natural to get a perfect, but you do the best you can to try to break them up into smaller molecules. Okay. Synthetic. Simple definition, it is the uh, combination or synthesizing two lightweight molecules to make a heavyweight lubricating molecule. That's the definition right out of the lubrication handbook. Okay, so that is a synthetic. Now we have different ones, but we're going to just talk mostly in the future about some called PAO. Now, big name, that PAO stands for poly. Uh, I'm, I'm drawing a blank here. Poly out. Oh, not alpine glycol. Poly alpha olefins. There we go. I got it. All right. See, sometimes folks, even you get old and you, you have these little brain things. Now, esters are the others. And esters, there's about a thousand different ester molecules that have been um, basically patented because they can be everything from the stuff that strips paint to additives that you put into oil or to their own base stock. And then we have today what we call severe hydrocracked. Okay. And that is a process that we won't spend much time talking about, but that is today considered a synthetic base. Okay. And just to make sure you know, I can say poly alpha olefin. I can say it, <laughs> but sometimes it uh, gets hung up in the throat. All right. Now, before we leave these base stock areas, we need to talk about that the industry has placed base stocks into groups. They have a group one, group two, group three, group four, group five. Okay, what is all that about? Well, it's based on basically cleanliness and what they would, they have a different term for it, but let's just say whether or not it will readily react with oxygen. Okay, and then a viscosity index, which we talked about back in our viscosity talk. So you could really say it's cleanliness and performance that separates these groups. Okay. Group one, that goes back to where we, we got all the big stuff out. We ran it into the, uh, refining tower and guess what? We put it out as a group one and it's still got about 30 to 35% impurities right in the base stock. Okay. Group one was never any good. It was easy to make. Not a lot of group one left. Okay. 
So keep in mind that group one is really just about gone. That's the stuff in the 1960s and 70s we used to be putting in our car. That's when we would hear people talk about all the sludge buildup. Well, that was because the oil was full of its own impurities. It made, did not make it do well. Group two, group two will be a better refined product with some amount usually of hydro treating to make it a much cleaner product. Okay. Now you can have some very pure base stock in group two because it's been uh, heavily hydro treated. So you can have a pretty pure base stock in group two. The reason it doesn't go further up on the list is it still doesn't have a natural higher viscosity index. It's not uh, as resistant to oxygen as maybe you'd like it to be. Okay. And um, so it's still a better product than group one. And most of our petroleum oils today are group two. There's probably, well, I'll just say categorically, there's not really any group one petroleum products available in the United States. Okay. Group three, group three is hydrocrack. That term comes up again. That's why I said you needed to remember it. Group three oils are hydrocrack. The problem is they can be lightly hydrocracked or they can be severely hydrocracked. Uh, the only ones that should qualify to be considered anything in the synthetic realm would be the ones that are severely hydrocracked, which means that 99% of all of the molecules have been fractured to a lighter weight molecule. You almost have a, a synthetic uniform molecular structure because of the hydrocratic process is so severe to get them almost all the same size. Then we move to group four. Group four, that's reserved for synthetics, real synthetics or chemical based synthetics like poly alpha olefins and esters. And then there is a uh, group five and group five is higher performing esters like polyol esters and diesters. Okay. So that's in group five. Believe it or not, there's a group six that we don't care about, but it's silicon based for extremely high temperature industrial applications. Okay. So what have we talked about today? We've talked about base stock. Base stock's easy to understand. It is the liquid that we are going to now put additives in to make a finished product. We discussed that petroleum based is crude oil coming out of the ground that we go through all kinds of machinations of production to make it cleaner and to make it a decent base stock for operation. Then we talked about synthetics. There are really two types of synthetics. There's a group three synthetic, which is the severe hydrocracked synthetic. And then the group four synthetics, which are the chemical based synthetics, such as uh, PAOs and esters. Okay. So we're going to need this information as we go further on into our next uh, discussions. In the next video, I'm going to shift to talking about the functions of a lubricating oil. That'll make it easier to understand what we're trying to do with oil before we get into how we formulate it with additives and base stocks to come out with the product we want to satisfy the functions that we will discuss in next week's or next video on the next week. Don't, don't put me to that commitment, but we will do another one soon. Okay. So if the video is helpful to you, Hey, push that like button down there so that uh, help us get more visits. And again, uh, as I told you early on, um, I'm in this business. It's how I make my living. And so if you find these things useful, uh, I'm going to just simply not be bashful about asking for your business. Uh, I need your business to stay in business. So if you're looking for uh, information, just go to the lubepage.com, call me at 800-370-2986. You'll find on the website where you can contact me. The email is easy. It's the same as the website, Dan Watson at the lubepage.com. I'd love to have your questions. I get them all the time. We'll probably do a video in the future on some of your questions. But again, if you go to the Amsoil website, looking to buy Amsoil, be sure and put Dan Watson in the referral block they give you of who, where'd you come from? And that'll help me out. So until next time, uh, just stay lubricated. <laughs>